So today, I want to talk to you about a subject that is very personal to me. And it's something that I believe I experienced for a few years, and it is depression. After I left the army back in the 90s, I found myself unemployed for several months. And as a man, I can tell you it really, really hit me very, very hard not being able to provide for my family and my kids. So during that time, I went to a down spiral, not knowing what to do because I went to college and I served my country. So for me, that should have been enough to go and obtain a really good career. But that was not the case. One time, I remember this experience like it was yesterday. Um, I was just standing in the small house that we're renting and then I began, I just went down to my knees and I asked God, God, help me. Please help me. I'm, I'm desperate. Please, please help me. So at that moment, I heard a voice and it was the voice of God. And the voice said, do what you do best. Learn. So I made a decision to go and read as many books as I can because I wanted to improve myself because I knew the problem had nothing to do with the environment or the economy or the circumstances. It had to do with me and my ego. So the more I kept reading, I kept reading, I came across a concept called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. So Cognitive Behavioral Therapy is something that the actual practice of it started way back by the time of the Stoics and all those uh, uh, philosophers. One of them was uh, Marcus Aurelius and Zeno. So the, the, the premise behind CBT is this. When a thought enters your mind, it comes down and we assign an emotion, whether it's positive or negative. From that emotion comes a behavior. So that behavior that has been reinforced by the emotion, by the emotion that started right here on our brains on the thought, it reinforces everything we have been thinking about, whether it's positive or negative. And oftentimes it is negative. So before I start talking about the CBT, the cognitive behavioral therapy, I can tell you that I read an average of maybe one book a week, and I did that for over 10 years. And it did work. It did help me somehow, but still it didn't address the main problem that I had and I had to do a lot of uh, soul searching in order to figure out what it was. Despite my improvement, there was always, always something missing inside of me. And I'm gonna tell you what that was. So let me go over the CBT model to give you a quick visual. So it all starts in the thoughts, as I mentioned to you. From the thoughts, our brain assigns if it is positive or negative. Oftentimes, we assign that classification based on our previous experiences. From here, it comes emotion. The emotion based on how we categorize those thoughts. Then from emotion comes the behavior, okay? So this is what happens after reading all those books for so many years and saw this self-help gurus and authors that make millions of dollars, right? This is what they tell you. Once you have a thought, if it is negative, change your behavior right away. What they call it, change your state. Once you change your state, then guess what? Then you're gonna send a different emotion and you're not gonna feel bad. You're not gonna, you're gonna get out of that feeling, let's call it sorry for yourself, or not necessarily that, feeling depressed. And some of those thoughts, I'm not gonna minimize them. They're totally legit. But from here to switching the behavior, it doesn't address, at least it did not address to me what I needed to do on a daily basis in order to improve. Because let's say for example, uh, there's, a, there's, some, there's a thought that uh, makes me depressed. Let's talk about, I don't know, overeating, right? Let's say eating pizza, okay? So if I like to eat pizza, that was a positive for me because I enjoy doing that. But at that moment, According to the experts, I need to change my behavior. Let me go eat a salad in order to counteract that feeling. Therefore, my emotion will shift. 
So instead of going out there and calling the pizzeria to get a slice of pizza, what I will do is let me go somewhere where I can have a salad and I will feel better about it. So once you do that constantly, you create that habit, then you can improve on that. But at that moment, there was a desire. But let's say tomorrow I have the desire of going out there and buying a six pack of beer for no reason. Let me go just get a six pack of beer, right? So guess what? Tomorrow I can either go out there and buy a six pack of beer or say no. But if I keep following what that expert told me, I change my behavior. Instead of buying a six pack, I go buy me a smoothie. All that is fine and dandy. The biggest problem I have with CBT is this. That CBT addresses the thoughts you're having in the moment and you find a way to counteract that by changing your behavior. But we really cannot control our thoughts. We really cannot control our thoughts. That's the biggest problem because it is almost impossible for us to every single day go out there and we find a thought, spend the time to decide is it positive or negative. Okay, let me do something else. This is my opinion. So let me explain to you what I did. So for me, despite of following the CBT program to the letter, I was very, very disciplined about doing that. When if I would enter my mind, I would figure out whether it's positive or negative and go back there and change the behavior right away. It wasn't a solution for me because I was not a total peace. What I mean a total peace is for you to have the feeling that no matter what is happening to you during the day, God's got it. Your behavior should be the same, totally the same at all times. And your behavior actually comes from knowing the grace of God. To live in the spirit. And how do you do that? Just find a quiet place where you can go talk to the Lord. Find a place of solitude away from everyone. When you go to that place, you sit in silence and you can repeat to yourself, Lord, you're my savior. Jesus, thank you for the blessings you have given me. When you have a grateful heart, you keep reinforcing, repeating that to yourself over and over again, a shift is going to happen. Not on your behavior, but inside of you, in your spirit. The key comes from aligning your spirit with the Lord's spirit. It all starts by having a grateful heart. I cannot emphasize anymore. We need to have a grateful heart. Our love for Christ has to surpass knowledge. I had a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge of how to deal with myself and how in my so-called depression. I had a lot of knowledge as to how to do it. And it kind of worked to some extent. But the hole I had inside my heart was about getting my spirit in unity with the Lord. And it all comes with spending time with the Lord. Read the mighty word of God. Go to a place of solitude. All those people that hurt in the past, write that letter to them. And you see, little by little by little, your life will change. Again, our channel is about creating men after God's heart. Love, power, and self-discipline. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family.